Hello year 9 students, this is Mr. Shaban. Today we're going to complete the unit of inheritance and variation. So let's start our lesson with Charles Darwin. In today's lesson we're going to complete uh, the unit of inheritance and variation with the last lesson of this unit which is called Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin Theory of Evolution by Natural Selection Charles Darwin was an English naturalist who studied variation in plants, animals and fossils during a five years voyage around the world in 19th century. Darwin visited four continents on the trip of uh, HMS uh, Beagle. Uh, Darwin observed many organisms including finch tortoise and mockingbirds during his five-week visit to uh, Galapagos Island. The Galapagos Island is found near the Ecuador in the Pacific Ocean. He continued to work and develop his idea once he returned from his voyage in England. Right now I'm going to display a video in order to show you the different type of finch that uh, Darwin have seen in Galapagos Island. And I want you to look at the beak. You're going to, uh, to see different kinds, but I want you to look at the beak just to get a clue about the differences between these finches based on the beak structure. After Darwin came back to England, he started to do some uh, analysis for his data and he came with a proposal. So Darwin proposed that individual, individual organisms within a particular species show a wide range of variation for a characteristic. So it's like a species or individuals that are found in one species might look different, exactly like humans. humans are looking different from each other. Individuals with characteristics most suited to the environment are likely to survive to breed successfully. So if an organism is adapting in an environment, that's going to make uh, more possibility for the organism to grow and breed in order to get more offspring. 
but if an organism cannot survive in a habitat the organism will not be able to breed nor to survive in this habitat and you will not going to see it anymore the characteristic that have enabled these individuals to survive are then passed on to the next generation as this organism has survived due to certain characteristic and is going to breed so the organism is going to pass these genes to the offspring or to the babies this theory is called natural selection so Darwin is the main uh, scientist behind the natural selection right now I'm going to display a video for you to see how Darwin has came up with his uh, theory so please watch it and we'll come back to answer some questions Eighteen thirty-five, the Galapagos Islands. Young English naturalist Charles Darwin collects animal and plant specimens for study. His observations on these islands will be fundamental in formulating his theories, which many years later will be published in his great work on the origin of species, a revolutionary book that changed the way biology was understood giving rise to new scientific theories. In this book, Darwin laid down the scientific principle that each species had not always been the way we know it today. Rather, each one had changed and altered over time. Three concepts are important for understanding Charles Darwin's theories. Natural selection, evolution, and the origin of species. In animals and plants, random trait mutations and modifications can appear. For example, a moth that is born a different color than its parents. Imagine that this mutation, or new trait, improves an animal's ability to survive in its environment. Animals with this favorable trait would be better adapted to where they live and have a better chance to feed themselves and to reproduce than other animals of the same species without that trait. The offspring of parents with favorable characteristics will normally inherit those same characteristics. So, generation after generation, a trait that was rare occurs more frequently, becoming the norm within the species. This process is called natural selection. With the passing of time, these favorable mutations accumulate and species change, constantly adapting to an environment that never stops changing. Here's how the evolution of species takes place. Two groups of animals of the same species that adapt to two different environments over time can come to constitute different species. This way, a process as simple as natural selection helps us to understand the origin of species. Charles Darwin was one of the most important men of his era, and many consider him among the most influential scientists in history. His theories on the origin and evolution of species were very new for his time and are still studied and discussed to this day. Darwin died in 1882. His legacy changed the thinking of an era and opened the door to a new way of understanding science, the world, and the role humans play on this planet. Okay, I want you to get your course book on the end of unit questions, page uh, 58 and 59. Uh, at the beginning we have uh, write a word for each statement so I'm going to give you one minute in order to go through each statement and give each statement a proper word so we'll take one minute and then we'll double check the answers together
The first statement, the chemical from which chromosomes are made, protein, excellent. The part of a cell uh, in which chromosomes are found inside the nucleus, perfect. Part of chromosomes that determine one particular characteristic of an organism that's called genes, perfect. The passing on of genes from parents to their offspring is called inheritance, excellent. The differences between organisms belonging to the same species, that's called variation. Right now we're going to answer question 3.3. Pedro wants to breed strawberry plants that have larger fruits. He chooses five of his strongest strawberry plants and plant them in the same part of his garden. When they produce fruits, he collects the fruit and finds the mean mass of the fruit from each plant and this table is representing the information for his experiment I want you to take three minutes to go through the questions and try to figure out the answers and after three minutes we're going to double check the answers together Okay, the first question, explain why it was important for Pedro to plant all five plants in the same part of his garden. The answer is to make sure that any differences between the plant were caused by their genes, not the environment. Mainly the minerals and the stuff which are found in the soil, they might affect the plant, as you know. So he wanted to make sure that the change is found only in the genes, not in the environment. 
Describe how Pedro uh, could find the mean mass of one fruit on plant A. He's going to get the total mass of all the fruits from one plant. For example, by putting all the, the fruits from one plant on top uh, onto a top pan balance and then he's going to divide this mean by the number of fruits. So he's going to get the overall mass and then divided by the number of fruits. Next question, which two plants should Pedro breed together? He should breed plant D and E. Uh, next question, the answer because the pollen uh, contain the male gamete and after the pollen is put onto the stigma it grows a pollen tube. This pollen tube is going to go down until it reach the ovary to fuse with the ovum or the ovule. By doing so, he's going to make sure that the only pollen that he wanted to get from the other plant is the only pollen that has fertilized the egg. Next question, suggest what Pedro should do next. He should let the plants grow until they produce flowers and fruits. He should choose the plants that produce the largest fruit. He should breed these plants together and he should keep doing this for several generations until he get the result that he wanted. In today's lesson, we have taken uh, a clue about Charles Darwin. We have taken how the organisms have survived by the help of adaptation. We have taken how the natural selection is taking place among some species in Galapagos Island. And you have seen some of the questions that you might come across within this part. So I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson and see you next time.